Uh, yeah, I am going to talk about record linkage. I do a lot of record linkage work at NORC, which is a, a research organization uh, affiliated with the University of Chicago. I've been uh, working uh, on record linkage for more than a couple decades. Uh, I started at the U.S. Census Bureau. And uh, I just want to say in contrast, what Graham was talking about seemed mostly to relate to maybe uh, an, uh, an interactive system, a real-time system, and usually in the context that I'm working with record linkage, we're dealing with uh, lists, which are not being uh, scrutinized in the real-time basis. That isn't to say that the record linkage methods which I'm um, uh, discussing uh, could not, they, they certainly could be applicable. And I'm, I'm working on a system now for uh, not in the health domain for uh, a real time application. So these, these are uh, relevant. Um, so uh, record linkage is linking records associated with the same exact entity. Um, there are other statistical techniques that can be used uh, for doing analysis of data which do not require the linkage on the same entity. One of those is uh, statistical matching, where the idea is that you're linking with something which is similar but not necessarily the exact same. And uh, linkage is based on the comparison of similar fields. And it's also related to deduplication uh, linkage of a file back to itself, or I should just say that deduplication I would think of as linkage of a file back to itself. It can be more complicated than that. There could be additional uh, features to that process. Uh, and it can also be called NC resolution or deduplication. So now I'm going to uh, look at the different methods that are used for linkage. So something we had just been hearing about was the question of, uh, you know, you know, how do you do the linkage? You can very simply link on uh, on a unique identifier. That is one type of deterministic linkage. It's very straightforward. It doesn't require the statistical model, which is used in probabilistic record linkage. Um, I mean, it's great if you have a unique ID, uh, which you can rely on, then it's, you know, you can't do better than that. Um, a lot of times in the data we work with, that's not the case. Um, but there's also the problem is maybe there's errors in those keys. And so you may include uh, validation in that process. And generally, when I'm thinking about record linkage, I'm thinking about probabilistic record linkage. Uh, and I'll go into that a little bit um, more depth on the next slide. And there's also alternative strategies for doing linkage, which I'll also uh, cover on the next slide. So probabilistic linkage implies that there is an underlying uh, probability model and kind of the traditional method which was used was uh, formalized mathematically by Fileggi and Sunter in 1969 and is an approach which is used by statisticians. And more recently, um, there have been uh, Bayesian models which are more advanced methods. And I'll look at comparing how, how they work. And there's also alternative strategies I'm just showing uh, they could use a classification tree or micro clustering. I'm sure there's there's others which people can tell me about. So right now I'm going to focus on uh, the probabilistic linkage methods. And the first method is again the Flegge Sunter method. And one of its high points is that it's, it's simple and effective. And it was proved by Fileggi and Sunter that for a simple scoring model, it comes up with optimal discrimination between what is a true match, actually what we just call a match, and what is a non-match. 
two records that don't represent the same entity, be it a person or an organization or something else. And uh, there's a lot of software out there which can run the flighty sensor um, models. And so that, that makes it easier for someone to implement this kind of thing. And it's very effective for large file sizes. Now, Bayesian methods, they use more complex models and they can include the use of variables which are not used for direct comparison. Um, as far as I'm aware, um, people can correct me if they uh, know differently, but sourcing of software is challenging. And a lot of these analyses, uh, because of the, the more complex models take long run times, and the file sizes that they could be run on uh, necessarily uh, are more limited in size. Um, but Bayesian also has the advantage that enables appropriate multi-way linkages, and that could also be important for uh, a deduplication operation and the computation of posterior probabilities. What is the probability that a pair is a true match? I will say that even on flaggy center, that is uh, to some degree feasible, but it's mainly on a pairwise basis, not on an aggregate basis. Uh, I'm going to focus on the flaggy center, and the main reason I'm focusing on it is because that is what I, I know the best. Um, I'm going to talk about how the linkages uh, work. Uh, essentially, linkage is between records and two files. There's a pair formation strategy. Um, and that says, how am I going to take one record from file A and one record from file B, and I'm going to make it into something I want to analyze whether they are the same. And the normal strategy, which is used is blocking. And we'll talk about blocking uh, a little bit later. And once you have those pairs, you're going to do the evaluation of whether you think they are a match or not a match. Uh, that is whether they or not they represent the same entity um, based on the comparison variables and whether they agree with each other or they don't agree with each other. And just to give you some examples of comparison variables that we would use, uh, with person level data, you know, this would be patient record data is dates of birth. And we would look at the components separately, uh, month, year, day, the names that could be first, middle, last, uh, address components. And certainly the, there's flexibility to use other pieces of information, but these are some of the most typical that are used for person level uh, linkages. And so associated with each of the, I, I call it a comparison set because the variable on one file for first name obviously may have a different name than the variable on this on the second data set, which also has first name. So, but for each of these sets, there is an agreement and a disagreement weight. Um, and they're set by some heuristic, which I will talk about in a, a little later. So what you're going to do is for each of these comparisons, so say we're working with first name, you're going to look whether they agree or they don't agree. Now, you say that's very simplistic, and it is. You actually can do a lot more. You can do uh, string similarities. You could do sound X, all types of things like that. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just say that they're, it's a binary outcome, which is uh, they agree or they don't agree. And if they agree, then you, you, the variable weight becomes the agreement weight. And if they disagree, it's the disagreement weight. And then you're going to sum those variable weights across all of the comparison sets. And you come out with the total score, which is called uh, the pair weight. And you're going to compare that to a threshold, and um, you know that determines whether it's a match or not a match. 
setting the threshold is is also another question. There are uh, heuristics for setting the threshold. Um, when I worked at the Census Bureau, we actually set the threshold manually, which I don't recommend, but that's certainly uh, one procedure which can be done. Um, as I said, uh, you know, your pair formation strategy, ideally, you would be comparing every record on file A to every record on file B. If it were a deduplication, it would be every record to every other record. Um, so this is uh, if you have large files with millions of records, which we often do work with files of these sizes, then comparing all the uh, all the records on the two files just uh, makes it uh, too difficult to, to 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 conduct the processing. So the standard workaround is the use of blocking, and blocking uh, you're going to come up with multiple blocking passes and each blocking pass is going to uh, break up the file into blocks and then you're going to only do comparisons within the blocks and the most simple way of doing the blocking is just by a key and so the key could just be first and last initial of, of the names that would be an easy blocking key. There's more complex methods such as K means, which I'm not going to get into. Um, but one thing uh, from a computing perspective is that once you have determined what is in each block, it's very easy to, um, to process these in, in separate uh, processing streams. Um, and I, I did add as a note that uh, the data engine for forming pairs is critical for efficient processing. Um, you know, we, we can use uh, statistical programs for doing this. Um, so I know that, for example, like R uses data table as a, apparently an efficient uh, database engine. Some are better than others. Uh, but this is going to be a critical factor if you have a, a large workload that you need to get through uh, quickly. So now we're going to talk about computational approaches. Um, the question is, well, how do you uh, set these weights? Well, the weights are formulaically related to what we call the M probability, which is the probability that a field agrees given that they represent the same entity. So what is the probability that first names will agree given the records represent the same person? And what is the probability that they agree even though they're not the same person? That's spurious, it's gonna be much lower. That's called the U probability. And we use uh, a machine learning and unsupervised method called the expectation maximization algorithm to estimate these. It's actually not that complicated to code, um, but if you have good record linkage software, it should be able to do this for you. Um, and I don't think I have the time to give you more detail on how it works. Um, and another place where machine learning can be used is the development of a blocking strategy and the importance of it is, well, if I block on first and last initial, well, clearly someone's changed their last name, we won't pick them up in a block. So we need multiple blocking passes in case we miss them in one. And how do you arrange these efficiently uh, to, um, to get the most of the true matches being found without causing excessive run times? And we use something called the sequential coverage algorithm, which is not truly an optimization routine, but it uh, generally finds an effective strategy for blocking. And we do use it effectively at the National Center for Health Statistics. And uh, some other features uh, of linkage design. I talked about partial string agreement. We use uh, a similarity measure developed by uh, Jero Winkler, Jero and Winkler, who were researchers of the Census Bureau. 
you may have heard of Levenstein distance. You can also use sound encoding like NICES or SoundX. Um, the probability model assumes agreements between variable sets are independent. And it's actually the case that if there is uh, not independence that can really uh, cause major problems to your fit. Uh, uh, data editing, just like any kind of data analysis, the editing is critical. Um, and we also use uh, nickname lists and name frequencies in particular is quite helpful. So the idea that you see two records and they have a, a shared last name, which is uncommon, makes it, should give it a higher score and uh, more likelihood that it, it is a true match. So these are a few techniques. There are definitely others which can be used to improve linkage quality. Um, okay. Um, I, I'll take the questions. This is my contact information. Feel free to contact me if you have questions about the the uh, topics I've discussed in this talk and just some background material on my company. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dean. So uh, first question from me. Uh, uh, can you explain how to estimate the quality of the algorithm? So let's say we um, did something, <laughs> how to understand that it works good or bad? Yes, that is, that's a fantastic question. Um, there are multiple ways to evaluate the quality. So kind of the standard method, which is used, which I really don't recommend, is that someone you know manually looks at them and scores whether they think they're a match or they're not a match and then they, they tabulate those evaluations. That, that is, that's a, an easy to understand method. Another method which can be used is assuming that part of your files uh, have a unique identifier that you can use those records as a test deck and see, well, what percentage of those did you actually get back? Um, or, on the flip side, you could say of the of the true matches which were found, how many times did the unique identifier disagree? So that's a that's a good strategy. It of course assumes that you have an identifier which is available to use for that purpose. Um, and the other issue is it's possible that the records that have identifiers may not be exact, but they may be biased compared to the full data set. The a more advanced method of evaluating is we actually have a probability model which evaluates the probability that each record is a match. So if you look at the ones that you linked, your probability model will tell you what you can add up all those probabilities and will tell you how many um, non matches were included among the linked records. So again, that relates back to the point about your probability model being good and you need to have a model which is well specified for those probability model to be used effectively. So those are among the, the methods that can be used. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There was a question, do you know what means refer referential matching? Is it data science term or is it some marketing stuff? Referential. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything to me, but um, it probably means something to somebody who is using it. Okay. It's often used to refer to things like uh, credit data or other external sources that are not necessary. Using extra data, yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we do. We analyze the data for policy. So we're not really trying to establish someone's. Uh, credit so I'm not that familiar with it but it does sound like you know you would be using similar linkage techniques to, to do that yeah, as I understand it just getting more identifiers to match like insurance uh, numbers, obviously the, credit cards phones and I don't know anything else well well if you have uh, phone numbers if you have email addresses if you have multiple addresses 
you know, just like any other data problem, well, I don't say, usually the more data, the better. Um, you'll get, you get better predictions. 